Hi everyone, Lisa Haven here, and I've got a major red alert. Well, the ATF, the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearm Branch of the United States government is sneaking in provision basically to create a national database of your firearms. Now, this is one major step in that direction. It's not the full implementation, but let me be frank with you. This would be so easy, literally by the click of a button, to have all that information of yours on on file and it's completely illegal and against the law what they're attempting to do. Take a look at this article here on DCDirtyLaundry.com. Red alert! The ATF is sneaking in a national registration. We only have until Monday the 24th of February to comment and get this thing killed. Listen up! The ATF is trying to change the 4473 form, the FFL firearm transferred record that you fill out when you buy a new firearm and they are going to sneak in a national registry at the same time. A little further in the article, it says all the ATF has now is an electronic card catalog system, kind of like that in a library. The records are digitally imaged, but not optimized for character recognition and digitalization, which would allow keyword searches because that would be illegal. In 1986, Congress enacted Firearm Protection Act, which banned the ATF from creating a registry of guns, gun owners, or gun sales. Congress also put a writer barring the agency from consolidation or centralization of gun dealer records in every spending bill affecting the agency from 1979 from to 2011, then made the prohibition permanent under law. The reason for the prohibition is that keyword searches and digitalization of text will handily lead to a national gun registry. And that's where we are with this proposal. If we allow the seamless transition of a national gun registry, it is a bell that cannot be unrung. And they're right. Basically, if you're gonna make everything digitalized, then it would be so easy for you to look people up by keyword searches. And we already know the 4473, basically they are um, attempting or putting the name of people with the gun information. And so how easy is it to have that national database, which we've been trying to prevent for a number of years. You see, all this happens as the coronavirus is breaking out, as the election is happening, because we've got all these other distractions. Not to say that they're not important, uh, because let's be honest, the election is critical. What's going on with the virus is critical. But you see how they seize up these crises and start implementing uh, laws and rules and regulations that go against our Second Amendment. And they're doing the same thing with our First Amendment right now. And it's crazy, the things that are happening. It's just crazy. And this is a straight up attack on our Second Amendment right, not to mention what happened in Virginia just this past couple of months, what's happening right now in the state of Arizona and in many other states where we are fighting for our Second Amendment right just to say we want to abide by our Constitution. It's like, since when do we have to fight for our constitutional rights? Well, we have to do it now. And let me encourage you, there's actually on Gun Owners of America, if you can do it today, because today is the 24th and we have to let them know, uh, basically fill out this form on gunowners.org website and send word to the ATF and let them know that you don't appreciate this action that they're attempting to do. You see, if everyone has a 4473 file on their guns, then everyone with a gun will be in a national gun registry that has been compiled by the ATF. If they're copying and copying and copying these things, then they have them all and they create a, a digital database, then you've got your gun registry completely done under the radar. And that's why I, I think it's important to um, keep you guys up to date not only with what's happening with the coronavirus, but what's happening uh, against our Second Amendment right now. Rahm Emanuel, never let a crisis go to waste. And I think that's what they're doing here. And it's not just that. There's actually attacks on our First Amendment right now. Uh, Right now on Twitter, they're implementing new rules, basically saying if a political candidate says misinformation of some sort, we're gonna put up a green, uh, not a green, but an orange and reddish warning that basically says this is fake news or misinformation. Uh, And they're gonna be doing this, you name it, basically to any of their political 
enemies. They'll be doing it to President Trump. They'll be doing it to conservatives. They'll be doing it to Republicans and probably Bernie Sanders, who I do not like, right? And I think he's just a plant to say, you know, look, it happens to the left too. Look at Bernie. No, it's completely and utterly happening to the right in mass quantities. But if they have someone on the left to frame, you see, oh, it's happening to Bernie. Then they could say, well, we're doing it to both sides. In all honesty, they're not doing it to both sides. They are not. It is those on the right, those with conservative values, those who support the Second Amendment, those who support the First Amendment are now those under attack. And let's be honest, hate speech, okay? There's no such thing as hate speech. It was created by the left to attack their political opposition, just like Hitler and Mao and, 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 and Kim, Kim Jong-un and Xi Jinping, just like they created it, just to say, this is a way that we censor the masses. And we do it in the name of, well, you know, this is better for you. This is in your safety. Not one tyrant rose to power and said, we're going to ban our political enemy. We're not going to talk about, we're not, we're, we're not going to, we're, we're suppressing our political enemy. That's not what they did. They said, oh, we need to protect your freedom of speech. We need to protect you. And we got to protect you from misinformation. We got to protect you from hate speech. And they always do it in the light of something good. Same thing that they're doing with our guns right now. Oh, we have to protect you from mass shooters. We have to protect you from shootings and protect you from yourself. What does that have to do with it? Not a darn thing. Not a darn thing. You see, because bad people still get the guns and most of the shootings happen in gun-free zones. We have a right and that's why they were created by our, by our founders. And they're very critical that we stand by the Constitution. Anyhow, I love you. I'd love to get your thoughts, comments, and concerns. And, uh, and please don't forget to check out my partner at hidewithlisa.com. If you've not gotten a VPN, I want to encourage you to do it. It's one way that you can surf the internet under the radar and not be detected. Uh, it's something that I use pretty much on every single one uh, of my computers, phones, laptops, all of that. Uh, I think it's critical in the time that we live, especially in today's day and age where they want to monitor everything that you do. So check it out right now. It's 24% off. Anyhow, thanks again for tuning in. I'm Lisa Haven, signing out.